So let me move on to, to, to the man, Mr. Jimmy Akinbola. And, um, and you know, Jimmy, go, you, you, you've been doing some great work within the industry as an actor and representing our culture, the black culture, um, you know, in, in, in TV and also in film as well. And um, one of the things I didn't mention, I, I, I was saving it, was obviously you now have also, apart from starring all the TV series that you've been in, apart from the Triforce Film Festival and also the, the events that you do, but you've also created this show, which is currently airing on ITV. It's broadcasting tomorrow night, I believe it's 10.45, and it's called Sorry I Didn't Know. And basically it's a game show about black history and focusing on black history. And it's, it's, it's the first of, of, of its kind. And um, yeah, so, you know, please tell people about that, how that all came about. Also, yeah, um, you know, I read about the, you know, the, the journey that initially, because I, I think people, if they remember, there was a pilot episode of Sorry I Didn't Know about four years ago which appeared on ITV and then um, we didn't see it again. And then all of a sudden, in light of kind of what's happened this year, it's now um, being commissioned. It's screening all through um, October, through Black History Month. It's, um, two weeks have gone already and um, should be on tomorrow night and also probably next week. So Jimmy, so tell, tell, you know, give us some um, idea of how this all came about and, and the concept and you know, the journey of getting onto ITV. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, yeah, first and foremost, I, I am an actor, but I'm also the co-founder of Triforce Creative Network, and we work in a similar space as the main Simone, uh, the TV collective, in terms of providing opportunities for diverse talent, you know, across film, TV, and theater. We do an array of programs like Monologue Slam, which is a free open actor showcase for actors to be seen by agents, writers, directors, producers, people that can move their careers forward, and that's completely free. We also do Writer Slam, which is a similar platform, but for writers, where writers only have to write 15 pages of an idea, whether they've got the whole idea written or not. And then uh, we, have, we have over a thousand submissions, and we put these uh, scripts in front of uh, commissioners and uh, networks like Amazon's, Netflix, and the BBC, etc. cetera. Um, and so, as we moved along, like we've been going for over like 16 years, we looked at how we're providing opportunities for writers and then actors. And then the next thing we was looking at uh, directors and behind the camera. And then that's why we decided to launch uh, the Triforce Film Festival. And everything we've done, it's always been about inclusion before it became a buzzword, you know. And if you came to any of our events, you'll see an array of different types of people, races, gender, ages, demographics. And we've always been really proud of that. And so uh, within this space that me and Simone occupy, you meet a lot of people and are they allies? You, you, you get a lot of doors shut in your face. There's two steps forward, 22 steps backwards. But as Simone says, you just got to keep, keep going. And um, since 2015, uh, as an organization, we've been doing a lot of things with ITV, but also as an insider outsider that I call myself, as an actor, I started doing quite a bit of work for ITV as well. And so I met a producer. He, uh, he came to one of our events. It was Monologue Slam. He loved it. We thought, oh, he's going to be interested in our drama or our comedy scripted idea. And he's like, no, I, I do entertainment shows. So we were like, oh, man, we're not doing that. But a year later, they were doing like a fresh season, which was Bane Pilots for ITV2. And we got that email and we was asked, do we have any ideas for a, a, a comedy panel show? And Fraser Ayres, obviously, when you're a small indie production company, you just say yes, and then you make it happen. So he said, yes, we've got those things. And then he created this idea, sorry I didn't know, which for us was a fantastic comedy panel show that is about black history, flash history, but with a touch of color, and it doesn't matter where you're from, it's for everybody. We wanted all the families across the UK to be watching it, chipping in with the answers, having fun, being educated, you know what I mean? Being enlightened and to laugh and learn is such a powerful thing. Anyway, we did that pilot for ITV2, which means you don't get as much budget, but we did 
a great job. It got probably the most responses from that fresh season. And he didn't get picked up. <laughs> and so a lot of people keep asking me this, you know, when, once he got released that we're, it got commissioned this year. Why? Why? What happened? And I'm like, guys, listen, even as a 15-year-old boy that wanted to be an actor, I could see the systemic issues within our industry. So, you know, another like 16 years on, I was upset and frustrated, but I wasn't surprised that ITV said no, as well as the BBC, Channel 5, Sky, everybody. And that, that blanket response, uh, we don't think it's right for our audience, you know? Um, and so, as you do, and Simone, again, I have to, because I know she battles on as well, You, as you do, Marlon, as we all do, just hearing people's stories, Andrew as well, you got to keep going. And so we try to keep pitching it. We try in the US. And we knew we had created something needed in 2016. But I think it comes, it's about timing, right? And so, and you need people still wanting to engage and work with you. And so in the middle of the pandemic and the BLM movement and stuff like that, but looking at myself and my career, I think it got really intense. Everybody was calling each other out. There was a lot of black squares, a lot of statements from uh, the networks. But I was like, that's not enough. What are people doing? And I remember seeing John Boyega's speech and how passionate that was and what that moment was for him. And I started being hard on myself. You know, I was like, am I doing enough? Am I doing enough? And then I looked at everything and I saw a quote, uh, like a post that John Boyega put on his Instagram was about everybody's got their own lanes. Marlon, you do what you do. I'm just doing what you do. He does. Simone's doing what he does. I'm doing what I'm doing. You know, and we, it needs all of us. So don't put that pressure on yourself. And so once I had that talk with myself, I looked at my career and I was like, well, I'm currently a lead on uh, Kate and Koji, which is ITV's biggest comedy here in many years. And I've got this pilot that we made in 2016. And if we're in a world now of having honest, awkward, tricky conversations, then Jimmy, this is what you can do. So I contacted ITV and we had the chat and I was like, we want to make this. This is even more important now than it was in 2016. And we want to make it our way and we want to make it with you. Do you know what I mean? You know? And um, it was an interesting conversation, but I felt a slight difference in terms of being heard. But you can't beat that feeling when you get that commission. So ITV gave us our first uh, pilot, and now they've given us first show. And we're really proud of it because for us, it represents like excellence. It represents a space that's been void for many years. These shows are normally all white men, you know, and in the creation of the show, we wanted to flip everything and use the ethos of our company. You know, so we're going to have women captains. We're going to have a man of color in the chair, you know, and, and we're going to have a wink, wink, nod at the industry and the education system. We're going, why do we have to do this panel show, you know, without hitting people over the heads? And um, for us, it's really important that this is not just a black history show. We made it for the mainstream ITV channel, uh, even when they offered us the pilot for ITV2. And yet we can see that there's, there's a perception. There's a lot of work to be done mentally uh, for our shows like this, not to be seen as a risk and to be embraced. Like, have I got news for you, QI? And we take the first win that ITV gave us these four episodes across Black History Month. But our vision is for it to be on TV all year round, like the other comedy panel shows. And then we can come back for October and do a special four. And then we can come yeah. back and do a, a special. But I realized that we embrace the opportunity and if you look at ITV, they've come out swinging. There's no other channel, I think, that can keep up with how much content they've been producing and backing, fully backing, you know? And um, for me, sorry I didn't know. I want you all, everybody watching, please, it's our last episode tomorrow. We want high numbers. It's trended every week since. And we want no excuse for ITV not to give us a second series. So please tune in and, and let me know what you think. Uh, it's, it's one of those shows that is out there on its own. I think everybody was, is enjoying it and other people might have some, some uh, feedback and stuff like that. But I think when you look at diverse tel uh, content, because we hardly have anything, it's really hard for our things just to be. Because if you have that one show, it was like, I hate Top Boy. I'm not a road man. That's not my life. I love Top Boy. That's not my life. 
But if that's all we've got, of course, yeah. it can also generate this negativity within our communities mm. and we start attacking. And I'm like, no, let's all support each other and let's lean on the industry to make sure that the TV schedules are much more diverse and inclusive for the 12 months of the year. So that's what we're trying to do, Trifles Creative Network, via Sorry I Didn't Know, as well as celebrate our kings and queens, uh, be it the Angie Lamars, the Colin Salmons, you know, and the Kojos, etc., as well as Paul uh, Chowdhury. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I mean, a quick one for a personal question, because, uh, you know, it's like almost like um, the, 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 the length of the programme. It's like, I always feel like as soon as it started, it's almost finished. Um, it's only 25 minutes. Is that something that you guys intended, or is that did, did, did ITV sort of, you know, help to make it such? Uh, no, that's we always uh, originally thought it would be a, like a, a 30 to 45 minute show. But yeah. I think the, the, the problem of ITV, their schedule is quite tricky. Where you, they, that's the reason where they don't really have comedy panel shows. It's like, where do you fit it in? How does it work? And so, and also, you, you have that in mind and then you forget. Uh, I watch Netflix, I don't watch commercials. You forget, it's not half hour, it mm. is 25 minutes. And so, it does feel quick because of all those things. And I think, you know, personally me, I speak to my business partner, I would love us to extend it. You know, even another like 15 minutes will let it sit even more. But no, it wasn't ITV telling us. ITV actually let us do our show. If this was our scripted uh, drama or comedy, this is a version of allowing the talent to tell their story in their own way. You know, there's been lots of conversations over the years that we don't get to tell our own stories. So... ITV, I've got to give it to them. They've allowed us to tell our story, this game show, in our own way. But yeah, Marlon, you're right. A lot of people are, you know, a bit like, why is it going so quick? And a little bit frustrated about that. But yeah. I'm happy about that because that's a conversation I hope when we get a season two, we can ask for that. But also, I do believe in less is more as well, you know? And that's thing, like, in, in terms of Quib is not around anymore, but that, 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 that quick bite thing of, like, I've just got 30 minutes of fantastic education, laughter, you know, and entertainment, and now I'm ready for my bed. You know what I mean? And, 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 and I'm, I'm going to process that, digest it, and maybe Google some stuff, you know? And I, and, and I think that's quite tricky to, to present a show that is almost about learning, making you think, and entertain. Getting that balance is really, if you, if you try to do like a one-page on it, it's a hard pitch in some ways. You know what I mean? If you call it an entertaining show. Okay, excellent, excellent, excellent. Right, because um, we're running out of time and um, we're, we're going to run over um, audience, we're going to run over a little bit, So, and we are going to carry on, carry on for a little bit more. I understand we can also play Young, Gifted in Black, um, and we'll, play, we'll now play at the end once we finish. Um, we, we also want to give you, the audience, an opportunity to ask any questions that you may have. So we want to give you 10 minutes to do that as well. So we're going to run over a little bit. Um, and, yeah, so... I'm, not, I'm just going to sort of like kind of finish up um, in terms of, you know, talk to, talk to you guys and hopefully the audience will have a couple of questions that they, that, that they want to ask. And um, switching back to, um, to you know, um, and, and let's sort of talk together now in a sense. Um, if, you've got any, if, you've got, if you've got any answers or comments, um, then please feel free to say it, Jimmy Simone. Um, but I kind of want to switch back to, because obviously I'm the film guy. Film is my thing. You know, um, I'm not the t I'm not on the TV arena. You know, I've been fighting for many, many years to create public access um, for for black filmmakers, open up cinemas to you know um, to the public and to for them to be able to see you know some of the best black films on, on, on the big screen, which you've been doing. For, you know, I've been fighting as people know for many, 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 many years to do that. And sometimes I feel like I'm on my own in in a, in, in a way in terms of doing that. Um, and even into you know what I'm doing now, where I'm moved into distribution now, and you know I, I, I'm you know seem uh, well. I feel I am one of the only guys, well, one of the only black guys in the UK now doing that basically. And distribution is one of the key, 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 key parts. And this is something um, Andrew is supporting me with as well. One of the guys that I reached out to, um, as I said, you know earlier on, um, 20th Century um, Disney had bought out 20th Century Fox. 
and I saw my opportunity to go and talk to Andrew. Um, I knew he'd be at home twiddling these thumbs, so um, <laughs> reached out to him, and you know, Andrew said yes, he would support me. And also set up, has also set up his own sort of distribution company supporting um, films from, um, from the diaspora. So, but I kind of want to spin back to Andrew in terms of cinema, you know, like cinema. You know, how can we do, you know, um, a similar thing as what was done for Bollywood films for black films? And you know, how are black films, you know, seen within the, you know, the, the mainstream film industry? Um, we, we know, and I'm talking about not on the outside, behind the scenes, in the, within the film distributor's office. So, Andrew, maybe you could. Mm. And, and this, this um, we want to give some quick, snappy answers and, and spread it around. And yeah. Then, yeah. And I, okay. I think it's we're in a different world now to 20 years ago. Um, there are 950 pieces of content released in cinemas a year. So that's a lot, you know. Divide that by 52, and, and that's how many films a week are releasing plus event cinema, plus all this diaspora audiences that we've mentioned and talked about. So in terms of the content, it needs to be compelling. This is pre-COVID with Netflix and streaming and Amazon on the rise. A lot of those middle range movies were, were starting to lose ground. And so only the, the best art house films, the five star reviewed art house films, the diaspora movies and the big Marvel blockbusters of sorts were taking money. Everything else was starting to kind of hit the ground and, and those were starting to move straight to Netflix. But then every now and again, you get a film like uh, Blue Story, which just came out of nowhere. And it was, uh, it really became a bit of a zeitgeist movie. And, and uh, you know, even though there was a lot of um, unfortunate uh, violence surrounding the film and the effect it was having in cinemas, sometimes, you know, there's no such thing as bad news. And that got, that got such widespread uh, attention and, uh, you know, that, that was a blockbuster in itself. That, that grossed like four and a half million pounds at the UK box office. Nice and yeah. I want to see, you know, what that guy does next, because I, I, I watched that film, not in the cinema, sadly, on a, on a BAFTA viewing. And I thought it was fantastic. You know, I, I thought that was really great. It was gritty. And, you know, so really uh, the, the next movie he makes, I mean, hopefully he'll make one a year at least. Hopefully he'll just carry on building on that, and the stars that were in that movie will start to become more and more familiar, and and that's kind of where it starts. You you almost need to, you you need to have this consistency. You know, you need um, one blue story a month in cinemas. You know, something new, fresh, and it needs to be consistent, consistently supplied, so that that audience are coming back, and not only are they coming back, they're seeing the next movie being advertised on the big screen on all the digital. Uh, screens and posters in the cinema so it, it, it becomes a habit you know otherwise if we're going to wait another year then you've got to start all over again and, right. and, and you know that, that that's the challenge so it, it, it needs to be consistent and it needs to be frequent so Jimmy Jimmy let me ask you because sticking on the, on, on the film thing um, again you know especially for us and, and, and this is something maybe Andrew sort of doesn't realize as well for us, like for a lot of the older, more mature, um, you know, people in our community, black people in our community, there, there's a lot of people who are not, you know, who are fed up of seeing films like Blue Story and seeing those films as the, the films that are successful and making the money. But films about that, that show our, our, our culture in a different light, in a more um, mature light. And, you know, it, it's not about life on the streets. Those films are, are not successful. Um, what, what do you think about, you know, um, that Jimmy, and, and in terms of, um, you know, cinema being more open to, to open to other films, and it's not just these, you know, the, the Blue Story or the Kid Out Hoods and those films that that that, that really are successful. Yeah. Um, first of all, like, yeah, the Blue Story. It, it was an it was an amazing um, moment and, and and film and it, and yet it reminded me of you know kid hood time and then it reminded me of uh, uh, what's the one with Ashley Waters uh, bullet bullet boy bullet boy yeah. you know then you can go further back there to the most Cisse you know that like there's we've had these moments and I listen to Andrew I feel like we have these moments but 
it's almost like it's not the, the momentum's not supported. It's all I've been saying this word a lot this year about nurture. I feel like the UK actually lacks a nurturing element when it comes to to, to diverse talent and content. You know, because you really everything Andrew's saying is correct. But if you haven't got those next productions behind that film, we just have massive gaps. Yes. But then there's a the depending where you are, if you're not, I feel like the one in one out mentality here it's in the business anyway but especially when you look at like diverse talent like if it's not steve mcqueen then nothing's really going to be considered if it's outside of i feel that genre you know and then i remember talking to no clark in his early years and he's like jimmy i pitch romantic films i pitch just a film about this 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 white girl this asian guy and then this black friend and they're just they're just mates and they're trying to find out their version of normal people but they don't like it they want the, they want the street thing they want the the road man thing the hood thing and 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 then when you hear that from someone like that successful you know sort of being number one in the box office charts ahead of hollywood movies you go how difficult is it in this business just to create what we need is that market of of movies and filmmakers to feel like if I make something, there's space for me to share it. And at the moment and over the years, I don't think like it's been like that. And so we are in a place now, a lot of people are self-sufficient. You can make your own stuff, but it's like, it shouldn't have to be like that. You know, like my thing is like uh, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy is an amazing movie, but where's, where's our version where you've got someone like, you know, Idris Elba, Marianne Jean-Baptiste, you know, David Harewood, Adrian Lester, Sophie Okonedo, you know, John Boyega, Leticia Wright, like all these names together on one poster. And we've never really had that. And I think it's just going to take where we are now. We feel like the industry is changing, but we've got to keep our foot on the pedal. But within the film world, I think there's even more work to be done, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I agree with you totally because, and it's funny, you know, um, over to Simone now, because it seems to be, it seems like TV has, is actually um, meeting that demand. And actually we've seen a lot more diverse kind of, you know, content, it, it, you know, um, on TV. Well, I, I have, you know, um, especially in the last month or so, so, you know, a lot more, especially with your show as well. I mean, there's, there's you know, game shows, movies, there's all kind of programs now that, that there's, um, you know, documentaries, reality programs on TV. Um, again, we're hoping that is sustained, as, as we say, and it carries on. But um, film seems to be a long way off, of, a long way off from kind of what I see happening on TV and also on the streaming platforms. Obviously, the streaming platforms are also instigating a lot of this as well. Simone, what, what's your thoughts? I mean, I think it's really interesting. The first, in the first thing you've got to acknowledge is that film takes a lot longer to make than TV and there's a whole entire different process and funding and all that kind of good stuff. Um, but I think that even in terms of TV, I think one of the most interesting things for me of recent um, is that I think when people come up with an idea, back in the day you would come up with a TV idea and then try and pitch it in TV, but I think that there's this moment where you've got an idea and you have the ability to say, oh does that work in a cinema? or is that an audio, or is that this, or is that that, and have some kind of choice. I also think that we don't really take advantage enough of the fact this direct to audience. Um, I saw somebody put a question up about, or make a comment about marketing around films. I think that the biggest, or all content, be it when I, you know, not necessarily films, TV, whatever content you're making, I think the biggest challenge right now, um, and maybe, and when we talk at TV, we know it's a kind of guaranteed money, so that's why people kind of tend to go to that route, it's kind of quite safe. But I think the biggest challenge right now isn't necessarily about getting your content um, commissioned, I think it's getting eyeballs to it. And I think that if you're quite smart and you've got the right team around you and the right people around you, that you just get your, you know, Blue Story didn't become, didn't just come out of the blue, he did something online that was popular, had followers, had gravitas, had a whole momentum behind him. So he was unable to have a different conversation with when making that film. And I think that we forget the power of our audiences, we forget the communities, we forget about how we can reach those little spaces, make something feel really sexy and exciting and people want to jump on it. Generally, we're quite trend, the black community, dare I say it, we're quite hot, you know, we're quite trendsetters. And we kind of set the trend do you know what I mean? And like people tend to like to follow us. So actually using that and really remembering that and thinking about ways we can be more collaborative. And I think in this moment, 
to Jimmy's point, Jimmy said earlier on that it's that kind of he made a choice to kind of go back and say, listen, you need to listen to me. You need to take this on board. This is the time. I think I'm hearing a lot more of that, that people are saying I'm not having it. This is how I want it to go. And I think that that's where the change comes. And also I'm hearing more collaborate collaborations happening, which is really exciting. This kind of, you know, you can't, this one in, one out, they might want to operate like that. But you see the one in, I come with all my people. We're all coming together. Do you know what I mean? We're all working together. Or I'm going to, you know, the, the Black um, Theatre Awards was really amazing because we had this organisation. You were able to pair it with a black production company then who paired it with a, a, um, a black producer. And not to say it was all about keeping black, but it was about being able to spot talent and say, listen, collaboratively, if we pull together, we could have something really exciting and we can then move on and see how we can build. So I think we have a lot, a lot of power in this moment. And we should stop looking externally for the industry and for others to sort out issues. We have a real moment. There's a real appetite. There's lots of different places to sell your content right now. It's not just the four channels when I was growing up and just cinema. So to be fair, cinema and TV are on their last legs. I shouldn't say that, but they are. Do you know what I mean? Streamings and all other places. There's so many places to get content right now. So you should be really inspired and think about smart ways of getting your content directly to audience. Yeah, I, and I, I, I kind of agree with you. And um, that's what Kush will be doing as, as one of the first full time black film um, distributors or content as well, um, content sales. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking out for content right now for films to distribute and also, um, con you know, content to, to sell to Netflix, Amazon and the likes. So, yeah. Um, so we're going to wrap up now. It's where it's um, 7, 7.40. And I'm not sure if there's any um, questions, quick questions from the audience. If you want to ask our guests any quick questions um, before we wrap up, and then we're going to play, go into the Young, Gifted and Black short film. And then after that, you can then go and watch um, the film Recorder, the Marion Stokes uh, project. You will have um, 24 hours. I'll give you till tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, uh, 8 o'clock, I'll say to watch um, um, the documentary. Um, so um, use a password and the Vimeo link sent to you to watch it. So um, you can watch it tonight or you can watch it tomorrow. Okay, after that, the password will be changed and you will no longer be able to watch it. So are there any questions that anyone wants to ask? Don't all rush at once, man. I mean, gosh, don't all rush at once with the questions, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, well, no, it doesn't seem like anyone's asking any questions here at the moment. Um, we've had some, I mean, good feedback from people in, in terms of some of the content that they've heard. Um, I mean, yeah, uh, I mean, wrapping up, it's, uh, let, you know, um, let's leave you all the audience, there's some filmmakers, I believe, let's leave the audience with some motivating, you know, um, um, stuff to motivate them in terms of what they will will be seen in the future on TV, what filmmakers, um, content creators can be doing. Um, Jimmy, um, do you want to um, leave the audience with, 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 you know, some inspiration? Um, I just, I was just checking some of the messages. Thank you uh, to some of the messages about the ITV show. Uh, I, the, I just want to leave with, look, it's a, it's a marathon, right? It's, it's not a sprint um in in always in your career your dreams your aspirations in in the work that we're all doing in all our different fields and uh and we've got to keep going if we don't do it who, who's gonna do it and um and uh and it takes a village so i say let's just keep talking supporting but let's put a lot of emphasis on the doing you know i feel like this this country we do too many sort of i know we're in the crazy times right now but too many panels and discussions i'm like the, the amount of time we spend talking, just get doing it, you know. Uh, so in some ways, I think, sorry, I didn't know, the fact that we had done the pilot, that had enabled us to actually to, uh, seize this opportunity to get the commission. And uh, I just wanted to plug that and say, please, all tune in. Uh, the more numbers, the better. And please hashtag it online. So hashtag, I, sorry, I didn't know. Okay, and, and just quickly review, what's happening with the festival this year? So with the festival, with the pandemic, we just said we're not going to try and do it online. We just thought it didn't feel right. You know, we, we would, we're hoping it'd be okay for next year, 2021. So we're still doing a lot of uh, 
for any writers listening, we do opportunities for writers via Writer Slam. We're working with Amazon at the moment. We're taking submissions for that. Uh, the Monologue Slam, again, we're going to see what happens for next year. But um, we're going to keep operating in this space, the same as Simone, but we're really interested in now building out the production arm. And also, obviously, I, don't, I didn't talk about Dandy, which uh, it stands for diversity and inclusion for behind the camera in film and TV. There's, there's a lot of discussion about talent in front of the camera, but I think the important focus is about behind the camera, those positions of, of power and control. And so we've been crewing up people all year round on films, TV, Netflix productions, BBC, uh, and anyone that wants that, I've put the website in the in the in the chat do take advantage sign up to the uh to the initiative again it's completely free and what we want to address is that simone's got this as well as for sure you have marlon um, and maybe you as well Andrew. where you get where are all the black female producers where are all the so-and-so crew where are the asian and it's just like that is so tiresome and then obviously when we've done work in that space for over the years you're just taking it for free. So we've created the a thing where the industry pays for it, not the talent, but we're able to create a top list of top people because we view too much as a risk and can they do it? We can all do it real good and we're all excellent. And so, uh, again, anyone that's listening that's trying to get into the industry or further on their, uh, further their career, just check out the, the websites that I've put on the chat. Excellent. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. Andrew. Yeah, I'd like to say something, actually. What's, what's become really apparent this year with, with Corona is it's really exposed UK, the UK cinema industry um, where they have not supported local products enough. Um, so right now, there's a serious glut of Hollywood products out there. Uh, most of the Hollywood movies have moved back to next year. And as a result, the only territories in the world that are surviving and doing pretty well are those that have supported local content. Okay. So China, Korea, Japan, uh, even France and Spain and, and Germany to a degree, there, there's a lot more support of local films. And right now, because there's no Hollywood films, um, it's a little bit late, but right now, you know, there's never been more independent films playing in cinemas than right now. Um, so I, I think this has been a big lesson for everyone. So I think there's a real opportunity uh, for so many reasons, but going forward, I, I think this has shown uh, the, the true um, importance of supporting your local content at each territory level. So, um, you know, if, if cinema is to thrive and survive going forward, it, it can't afford to turn its door on any aspect, any element of, of, uh, of business. And so hopefully I, I, I'd like to think that you're going to find um, exhibitors being a lot more welcoming open arms to possibilities going forward that perhaps in the past they haven't been able to accommodate because there's been too many screens playing the Hollywood films. Yeah. So I think it's an exciting time and, and you know, hopefully to challenge what Simone said, that if, if cinema is going to survive, it, it needs to change now more than ever its approach with content going forwards. Thank you very much, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So um, I'd, like to thank you all. I'd like to thank all my guests. Um, Jimmy, Simone, Andrew, um, it's been a, a real inspiring talk and there's been some good comments in, 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 in the chat. Um, you, know, um, you know, all I can say is, you know, um, yeah, just, just keep believing, just keep doing. Um, people know me already, you know, um, no doors ain't going to be shut on me. <laughs> I'm creating my own doors and opening my own doors and I've always been doing that since I started in, in 1998. I'm still here 28, uh, 22 years later. Um, and you know, um, yeah, you just got to just keep, you just got to keep believing in yourself and believing in what you're doing, and um, just don't take no for an answer. Do not take no for an answer. So, um, thank you very much, everyone. Um, hope to see you all all again on the 26th of November. Um, I believe Nick, who's controlling things behind the scenes, is going to be able to play young, gifted, and black for us now. And then after that, everyone, you need to log out and then just basically go back to your email, get the link for um, the documentary film Recorder for Marion Stokes Project. As I said, you'll you have till tomorrow evening, 8 o'clock, to watch it. After that, you will not be able to watch it. 
Um, and um, the link has just been put into the chat, the chat for you. You should have the email also um, with the passwords. Okay, the password is there. Please do not share it with anyone else. Um, as I said, it's a brand new film. It's not out yet, so please do not share the password. And um, this is one of the film, one you know, another film that Kush Films is bringing to you. We're now doing things virtually online, and we're hoping to, to be doing some excellent stuff, bring some excellent films to to UK audiences in the future, physically in screens and also online. Um, thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. I'm off to watch Tottenham. See you later. Bye. <laughs>